Thank you for coming by Tori Magoo 44. Today is March 21st. If you missed my happy Easter, happy Easter to any of you who celebrate it, whether you do or not. I always did as a kid and I loved it. Mostly I love the Easter bunnies and just the fun of it. The kids getting eggs and stuff like that. It's a very fun holiday. Anyway, today I thought I'd teach you, people have asked me a bunch of different questions, and I thought I'd teach you all probably the one religious thing I knew of in Scientology. Really the only mention of kind of like God or anything having to do with it at all. Okay? And that is L. Ron Hubbard talking about the eight dynamics. He says that basically we all survive on eight various different dynamics. I don't know that that's altogether false. I think it might be pretty true, but you can tell me what you think. Um, but I'm going to tell you what he said. Anyway, first of all, you survive on your first dynamic, which is survival through self, right? Just yourself, how you survive, right? Second one has to do with your family. It's love, sex, and the rearing of children, right? So here's your family, right? Two of you, whoever that might be, and then the rearing of your kids. That's the second dynamic. The third dynamic has to do with all living things, right? Oops. So here's, you know, plants. We've got animals. Here's my little giraffe somebody gave me. So all living things, right? That's the third dynamic. No, I'm sorry. That's the, did I say third? It is the third. No. Oh, I'm bad. Me bad. First is you. Second is the family. Third is the group. I forgot. Pardon me. Okay, group could be, let's say your kids go to school. That's a third dynamic. If you go to church, that's a third dynamic. Um, you could say, let's see, if you went out to a football game, that football team is a third dynamic. Soccer is a, a ballet group is a, four, is a third dynamic. Here's your, uh, this is my little poker guys. These are monkeys. They're playing poker. Now you can see this guy's a little out ethics over, let's see, right here. See, he's got his little cards hidden away underneath his leg. So Scientology would say he's out ethics. But point being, that's a little group right there. Okay? So you've got various different third dynamics in your life. Fourth dynamic is all of mankind. Fifth dynamic is, there you go. Fifth dynamic. Plants, that's it. I had it wrong. <laughs> have to go to correction and get it corrected. And here's uh, my little giraffe somebody gave me for all living things, right? He isn't alive. He's really what they'd call the sixth dynamic, which is matter, energy, space, and time. This is a piece of mess. That's what they would say. This is mess. It's actually a really nice piece of mess. So they would say, ooh, that's a nice piece of mess, right? But I'm using him as an example of an animal, right? But your mess could be your clothes, your house, your car, you know, any kind of physical things. Your, your phone, you know, your cell phone, those are all pieces of mess, right? And there's that. The seventh dynamic has to do with you as a spirit. You as a spiritual being, when they do counseling or auditing, they're dealing with you as a spirit. That's what they say. And then the eighth dynamic is their one mention of God, which has to do with the supreme being. And they say, Hubbard said, whatever you believe that to be which they try to promote that they are, oh, we're a non-denominational church and anyone can belong to any religion. And sure, they can when you first start. Remember, it's like a triangle. And at the bottom of the triangle, yes, you can. anybody can believe anything. But as you start moving up the triangle, it's very much like OT3, Hubbard goes into how all of this religious stuff is part of Xenu, and all the things having to do with that incident. And for the lady who told me not to do that, I know you think it believes in this is for Satan, but it really stands for Xenu for me. That's why I'm doing it. So there you go on that. So that's really the one mention of God. I mean, I was raised a Catholic, so I always kind of had God in my life. I felt. And I always thought I had angels, too. I did. But that's me. I believe that. Even a lot of critics probably, you know, they don't. I, I've talked to a lot of atheists, and they don't believe in that at all. And that's fine, too. I don't really care. But to me, I always felt like I did. But most Scientologists really have very little connection with God. And even myself, I didn't. Way until right at the end. I didn't at all. I never even thought about it. So they don't really have any faith. They don't believe in anything. Theirs is the tech. See, it's what, what Hubbard 
any cult, they have a leader, and that's somebody who self-appointed themselves to be the leader of their cult. And it's very manipulative. If you join the Sea Org, like they talk about the second dynamic is sex or bisex, bisexual, right? But in the Sea Org, kids can't have any sex at all until you get married. So I don't recommend anybody joining the Sea Org because that's not too fun. Plus, it's a slave camp. That's the essence of it. You work 24-7. You get paid really crummy money, and as soon as you want to leave, they start making you wrong. I don't recommend you join Scientology either. Even though the people are very nice, they are. I have no question on that. A lot of them. But the guy who runs it is a total con man, David Miscavige. He's a weenie, which I've told you before. He's a little chicken shit who beats people up, and he's not a nice guy at all. And the followers are pretty much floor mats, too. I mean, the fact that my ex-husband bought his books from L. Ron Hubbard and then bought David Miscavige 35 years later saying, Oh, it wasn't written right. Come on! What can you people be thinking of? I just can't believe my friends bought all this stuff. But it's a money game. You have to remember that Scientology is a money game. If it has to do with money, they're in on it. So, there you go. They don't, it's not a religious holiday on Easter for them. It's not a religious holiday for any religious holidays. They, they don't have, it isn't really a religion. They have their Sunday service, and they only started that because they realized the rest of the churches didn't think they were a church because they don't have any services. Now, their justification on it is like, well, we're in session all the time, doing our sessions, so we're basically in church all the time. No, they're not. Come on. I remember when you became a church, when they said everybody has to get ordained a minister in one week. We did a one week course and we're ordained a group ordination and now we're ministers. <laughs> oh God, this story never ends. Anyway, you guys, I do hope you have a fun weekend, you have a safe weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Bye bye.